let's talk about politics and governance. On this episode, we explore the role of gender in parliamentary attacks and incivility. Are women less likely to attack and be attacked than men due to their stereotypical gender roles? Do different political systems or specific events, political events influence the adherence to gender stereotypes by politicians? To help us clarify these questions, we welcome Zeliko Poliak from the Department of Political Science at the University of Antwerp. He has recently published his research on this topic in our open access journal, Politics and Governance. Hi, Zeliko. Welcome to our episode. Hi, Rodrigo. Thank you for having me. So the first question, uh, of course, after this quick introduction, why is this topic important? Well, it's important uh, because we know that negativity and hostile politics um, can um, basically uh, have a bad influence on us as citizens, as voters. So, for example, negativity has been shown to demobilize uh, certain parts of the electorate from going out and voting on the election day. Uh, it has also been shown to increase polarization in society and so forth. So, of course, it's very important to actually know what is this negativity in politics that is taking place? Uh, and more importantly, who is basically to blame, so to say, for, for this negativity? Which type of politicians uh, are going to be more negative? And so, of course, in this particular study, uh, I was looking more into gender patterns of, of uh, this negativity that takes place. Mm -hmm. uh, what were you hoping to find when you launched this research? So what was the research gap here? Yeah, so basically, as I said, uh, we don't know much about this negativity in politics. We know much about negative campaigning, but campaigning is very short. So campaigns last a couple of weeks. Uh, and so we don't know that much in the literature about, you know, regular day-to-day -day politics. So when you scroll through social media or you open newspaper, you probably see certain negativity in politics taking place. Uh, but yeah, basically, we weren't necessarily, well, we don't have much indication of um, who are these politicians in this day-to-day -day kind of uh, politics uh, that are going negative. So one of the expectations uh, of this particular study was that actually men uh, would be more negative um, than uh, women. Uh, and the reason for that is because uh, female politicians and women in, in general face certain stereotypical uh, um, stereotypical norms um, in politics that men do not necessarily have to endure. So, for example, we tend to associate women with kind of um, norms that are, you know, that they are kind, sympathetic. So, of course, uh, if a, a female politician wants to engage in political conflict uh, and discussion, uh, she's going to face much bigger backlash uh, than their male colleagues, for example. So the expectation was that basically in a day-to-day -day politics, it is going to be more men who are going to engage in this um, negativity in politics, specifically in parliaments in this paper, uh, while uh, women less so. However, we know from other literature that, uh, for example, women sometimes need to be negative if they are in the opposition, they, they need to be critical of the government. So then the expectation was uh, because women probably have to deviate from the, the uh, from the stereotypical norms in these situations, so they need to be hostile, but that doesn't really fit the expectation stereotypical mold that we have in society. Then we expected that they would be uh, more civil in their criticism than men. So men, for example, can be more incivil in their discourse because they are going to face uh, less of a backlash. Uh, unlike women, uh, because yeah, we see them more kind. So if if women goes negative, she's gonna be very kind, so to say. Of course. So after these expectations and what the literature literature told us, so what were uh, the main findings of your research? So we focus specifically uh, on parliaments as a venue. So it's a, it's a perfect venue in day to day politics, uh, where politicians, of course, uh, engage in deliberation and uh, they clash on policy and so forth. Uh, so we focus specifically on uh, UK, uh, Belgium and Croatia as kind of very three, uh, three different countries in Europe that have different uh, female representation and different political systems and party systems. Um, and so what we found uh, um, using the, the full, full data that we have on parliamentary attacks uh, from these three countries, we actually were able to see that uh, when women uh, participate in parliamentary debates, uh, they are uh, significantly less likely to, to attack, uh, and uh, they are also significantly less likely to use incivility in case they do uh, attack. Furthermore, we were also able to show that 
uh, not only are women less likely to, to go negative, but also that they are actually avoided uh, in any type of conflict. So basically, when politicians attack, they are more prone to target male politicians because, uh, again, going back to the theory, the men kind of fit more the mold of someone who is, who is hostile. So it's more easy for politicians to target men rather than women who are, you know, uh, put in this kind of framework of uh, being kind of sympathetic. Uh, so these were the expectations we were able to show. However, it is important to stress that we also predominantly find this effect in the UK and less so in Belgium and Croatia. Uh, and there are several reasons why this might be happening. Um, uh, and one reason that I that I also offer uh, in this study is that, uh, for example, in Belgium uh, and Croatia, you have gender quotas. So for example, uh, female politicians have a certain level of protection, so to say, in case they would divert from these stereotypical norms, they could still, for example, uh, get reassurance that their party is going to feature them on the ballot and so forth, which is not necessarily the case in UK, where gender quotas do not exist. They are not bind, uh, bind uh, par parties are not binded by law to to feature women on the ballots. Uh, so it could be that uh, women in UK politics face much more pressure to to adhere to you know these classical gender norms. Uh, of being more tamed uh, and not necessarily engaging in attacks as much as their colleagues in, in other countries where gender quotas, for example, exist. Thank you, Zeliko. And uh, after these findings, uh, what now? Can you indicate to the researchers um, out there what comes next in this topic? So what doors uh, does it open for future research? Because you mentioned, for example, these uh, geographical differences. Would that be a way? Yes, exactly. So, so uh, one of the limitations of the study is that um, uh, we only have three countries. Of course, the more the better, uh, especially considering the fact that we find this difference, uh, well, significant difference between UK and Belgium and Croatia. Uh, so it would be very good to, to, to translate uh, this type of research to, to other contexts that resemble more uh, UK. Uh, so, for example, US, uh, Canada, Australia, so all these kind of systems that have um, two-party systems, single-member districts, uh, no gender quotas necessarily in place, uh, to basically see if, if we would uh, see similar patterns. Uh, and furthermore, what we didn't really tackle uh, in this uh, particular study uh, was the fact that we didn't really necessarily look into the content of these attacks. So we did look into incivility, so whether they are incivil or civil when they attack, but we didn't necessarily look into issues that are brought up in these attacks, what, are, what is the kind of uh, broader discourse that is taking place. So it would be very fruitful to also see furthermore when uh, politicians are attacking, uh, what is exactly the discourse that is that is taking place. Because we, could, we might be able to see that, uh, for example, in Belgium and Croatia, women attack more uh, than they do in the UK, but it might be that the, 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 the discourse and policies that they are attacking about uh, are similar, for example. Mm -hmm. Very interesting findings and still a lot to explore. Um, yes. Can you provide some additional resources about the topic that we discussed today? Any articles or videos, um, some self-promotion as well, if, uh, yeah. if it's the case? <laughs> well, yeah, so so uh, I, I can recommend uh, so the, the papers that were kind of the basis uh, for, for my study and for people that might be interested in gender and parliaments. Uh, and uh, kind of this negative, hostile uh, politics in general. Uh, I can recommend uh, a work from Martin Hasselmeier um, and colleagues from um, two years ago uh, on um, a sentiment of political speech in parliaments, where they looked also into differences between uh, female and male MPs uh, in Austrian parliament. Um, and also I can recommend um, Lotte Har Hargrave uh, from UK. She recently defended the PhD where she also looked into kind of broader um, gendered uh, speech uh, in the UK Parliament, uh, and not only that, but she also looked, for example, how voters differently perceive uh, women and men in politics. Uh, so these are definitely, I would say, fundamentals to to start from. Uh, and maybe for people that look for something more easygoing uh, and more entertainment-wise, uh, I would recommend um, a Danish uh, political uh, TV series Borgen. Uh, so it's about it's a fictional story about female uh, prime minister, uh, but I think the show does very well in in kind of 
demonstrating how female politicians need to balance between various aspects just because they are women, just because we expect them to, for example, take care of family, take care of their kids, of their husbands and so forth, which is definitely a context that male politicians uh, probably face less uh, and are less accept expected to, to take care of uh, simply because they are men. Of course, even Brigitte from Borgen can help us understand this topic. Yes. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Zeliko. Uh, this episode is available on Let's Talk About Politics and Governance website, on Cogitatio's YouTube channel, as well as in podcast directories. Zeliko, it was a pleasure. Thank you.